Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. Legendary demons are on the loose threatening humanity and only a hunter can seal them away again. Today we will recap the story from the 2013 movie, Journey to the West, Conquering Demons. In a small peasant village, a father and his little daughter are playing near the river. While he is making some underwater jokes to make her happy, something went wrong. The man starts to be dragged very hard and is violently killed by some mysterious creature. The village panics and summons a master warrior to hunt down the mysterious creature. He throws an explosive sphere into the river and with the impact, a giant stingray appears dead. Everyone thought that at last they had rid themselves of the terrible monster. The warrior received several items of value as thanks. But the great protagonist now appears. His name is Tang, a Buddhist monk and demon hunter. He warns that that stingray was not the monster that caused the death in the village, he warns that the demon was still alive. The whole population turns against him and beat the poor guy up. The hunter warns them once again to stay away from the water. And to prove that they were safe, the imposter warrior pushes one of the monks into the water. Everything seemed right. Then dozens of people jump into the river and celebrate the death of the demon. But Tang, who was trapped up there, had already noticed that the demon was approaching the village again. He shouts trying to warn everyone, but no one pays attention. Suddenly a woman is devoured in a single bite by the monster. And panic breaks out again. Everyone leaves the water, climbing onto wooden platforms. But this is not enough. The monster has a disgusting tentacle that pulls its prey into the water. Even if people try to climb to the higher floors, the tentacle can pull them up easily. People protect themselves in their homes as best they can and Tang is still out there alone with the monster. The little girl Shang also stayed behind and started screaming for her mother. Tang asks her to be quiet. But it is already too late, the tentacle sticks to her and begins to pull her. Her desperate mother runs and grabs her legs. More villagers show up to help. Even cutting her hair, the monster clings to the girl's body. With a scythe they break the damned tentacle, but the little girl was already falling into the water. Her mother holds her by the arms and the demon emerges from the river and devours the child. The desperate woman jumps into the river to save her daughter, and even though she has a scythe in hand, the demon tigerfish finishes her off in one bite. The wooden bridge collapses on impact and a basket with a baby falls from the mother's arms, she was sliding down the platform toward the river. But Tang breaks free and jumps onto the opposite side of the platform, lifting the baby's side. He had almost reached it, but the demon lowered the other side again, and Tang had to grab the imposter to help him counterbalance. The big evil fish hits the platform and throws the baby into the water. As the bridge began to rotate, Tang held onto the man's nose, and grabbed the baby out of the water at the critical moment of the attack. He managed to throw the little baby up there. Only the basket was still hanging there and the demon was coming at full speed to get the child. A peasant breaks the rope of the giant stingray and the creature hits the monster head on. Tang runs to get the baby, only to have the creature break the pillars of the platform again. And throws the boy down. So as not to be devoured alive with the child in his hands. He uses the seesaw system again, ordering everyone to jump on the platform, to try to throw the fish out of the water. But the creature weighs too much, and even dozens of men are not enough. Then a very large lady jumped up on the platform and threw the evil big fish out of the river, and the monster turned into a thin man with long hair. Tang spread a cloth in front of the boy, put away his spiritual artifacts, and started to turn a crank of a musical gizmo, singing a very annoying song. Only it didn't work out so well. The demon started beating him in anger, until a woman appeared and struck the entity, placing him inside a bag of holy cloth, the monster became a plush keychain. This woman is Miss Duan, also a demon hunter. She asks what Tang's skill is and he shows her that his power is based on a book of 300 children's poems. She laughs in his face and finds the whole thing totally pathetic. Tang left the village disappointed. Duan received all the recognition for the death of the demon. And yet the man was not able to save the child and his family. He tells his Buddhist master that he thinks he is unable to defend people. The master says that he will find his true power in the book of poetry. A true hunter removes only the dark soul of the enemies and lets only their good part live. He must continue his hunt to awaken his true power. Far away in a place called the Gao Family Inn. A couple of warrior walkers enter the place to take a break from their journey. They are greeted by a strangely helpful man. He shows them the batch of succulent pigs they are preparing. And he serves it to the couple, who seem to have enjoyed that crunchy and tasty little cube of meat. While they were enjoying the architecture, and praising the decor, the attendant introduced them to the master chef who prepared such a wonderful dinner. His name is K.L. Hogg, a mysterious being that looks like a plastic doll. The master chef doesn't say anything, he only answers questions by dancing and waving. The girl insists several times for him to say something. 
The man gives a scream of rage at the woman's insistence. The couple tries to flee. But the demon takes his gun and eliminates the traveling couple. A little later Tang also arrives on the scene. He is received by another receptionist. But different from the previous couple. Tang can break the illusion with his mind. Everything around him was a jutsu of illusion. The couple that seemed alive, was lying on the floor covered with blood. The pigs are not at all succulent, they have dead people inside them, and the candlestick is a deadly gallows. Tang says that he is a hunter and asks the monster to reveal himself. The woman holds his arm, and Tang throws two powerful punches that literally smash her face. Before being countered, Duan appears and again uses all her might to punch the bizarre receptionist. Duan now harnesses the power of her rings. Her attacks range from single throws that destroy enemies, to a charged attack that fires several rings, turning each enemy into dust. After finishing off the entire horde, the demon hog was still missing. He serenely approaches, and begins to fight Duan. In an attempt to get his pitchfork to attack her, Duan uses her ring pile ability. A few attacks reveal part of the monster's true face. Duan needs to use a stronger attack. She then fires a whirlwind of rings at the demon, who can easily knock all the objects away. He counters with his metal fork, and the woman quickly defends herself and escapes death. The huntress then jumps over the monster and catches it with the ring around its neck. Revealing its grotesque appearance, Tang will have to help her with the final attack. To trap the demon it is necessary to suck the essence of the creature through its mouth. Tang felt his stomach twist, but he accomplished the task. Duan pulls the monster towards her and releases it into her cloth bag to seal it. But this pokeball is not suitable, and the demon escapes in its last form. A boar in brutal fury mode, the two manage to escape the total destruction of the temple. Although they were injured, they were fine. The two talk for a while and as Duan feels a great love for Tang she begins to express it. But the hunter runs off and disappears into the forest. Tang returns to his village to ask his master for help and to learn how to eliminate KL Hog. And receives the information that only the Monkey King can teach him the techniques to exterminate demons. Tang must find him on the Five Fingers Mountain and convince him using his book of 300 children's poems. But this will not be easy. Tang barely resumes his journey and already falls into a trap. He is caught by a gang of pirate wanderers. And finds Duan among the prisoners. The pirates look threatening. But Tang realized that those spikes in Duan's hand were fake. It was all a trap made by the Slayer. She is the boss of the pirates and she set all this up just to try to win the heart of her beloved Tang once more. What they didn't count on was that the wagon's trapping system would catch a creature. It is pulling so hard that it manages to blow away part of the wagon. It is then that the boar demon is revealed. Duan gives the command to activate the iron blood system. Her men begin to fill an airbag and hammer it to move the wagon at supersonic speed. They seem to have lost the boar. Only the little pilot boy warns them that the monster has turned around and is coming up ahead. Duan throws Tang out of the vehicle and the boar bursts the wagon with a headbutt. Their salvation was that the boar's presence attracted a team of powerful hunters. One of them is the great Kung Fu Master, who used the styles of the tiger and the praying mantis to scare the demon pig away. As the boar had gone, Tang asks Duan for his poetry book back, for he needs to follow his mission. The woman was furious with him, since Tang kept ignoring her. So she decides to shred the boy's holy book completely. Tang decides to turn his back and leave on his own. It was a long walk through the mountains, facing horrible storms to reach the Five Fingers Mountain. When he finally reached the top, there was the ancient time described by his master. But everything seemed empty. Looking through the water, one could read the phrase, water reflexing mirror. The clue was so that Tang could meditate looking directly at the river, and the reflection of the water would form the image of Buddha on the mountain, indicating the location of the Monkey King's prison. Tang goes to the indicated place and finds some plants with only one white lotus flower. It indicated the secret entrance. The boy falls into the hole and is surprised by a totally lunatic guy, who has been imprisoned there for more than 500 years. This is the Monkey King. Outraged at having someone present for so long, the man tries to escape, only to have the roots of the plants strike him like electric whips of punishment. There is no escape. To calm him down, Tang hands him a banana and only then tries to ask him how he could eliminate the demon pig. The Monkey King says it is necessary to lure him with a girl dancing under the moonlight. Tang thinks this is perfect, because Duan has arrived at this very moment. The king teaches her some bizarre dance steps. And then they set off on their mission. Duan begins her dance under the moonlight and it doesn't take long before the boar arrives in full fury. The Monkey King begins to shout at the demon pig, saying that it has been a long time since they have seen each other. When the boar sticks his head in the hole to see the king, he ends up being captured by him. The Monkey King turns him into a little piglet. So Duan can seal it in a pokeball. 
and create another little keychain. Tang continues to despise Duan. She asks him to marry her and even rebuilds his poetry book with all the patches. For the thousandth time he ignores her and tells her to leave him alone. Devastated by Tang's attitude, Duan decides to leave forever. While thinking about the mistake he made, the man hears the Monkey King from below asking him to remove the lotus flower from in front of the hole because it was blocking his view of the moon. Tang sees no problem with the creature's request and removes the flower. However, the object kept the monkey demon sealed in. Now without it, Wukong is free and back to his original powerful form. He begins to beat Tang to a pulp, and pull out clumps of his hair, until he is completely bald. The man just expresses pain and begins his Buddhist prayers. Then the three hunters arrive to face the Monkey King and decide to draw lots by mocking the demon in the face that they would easily defeat him. The first was the Kung Fu Master, who was devoured by Wukong in exactly three seconds of fighting. Next it is the turn of the Almighty Foot. His small foot actually becomes a colossal foot. The hunter comes leaping up and lands an atomic kick on the Monkey King, but to no avail. Then he decides to do his crushing stomp, but Wukong is as tough as a nail and ends up piercing the master's foot. The man is left crying in pain with his tiny foot trembling. Finally, it is the important prince's turn. He opens his box of swords and throws just one, which transforms into a flying sword and drags the monkey into the sky. Then he throws several at once, and indicates with his finger his movements, trying to slice the absurdly fast Wukong. The swords keep chasing the demon and striking in different directions. But the king still fights them back with the help of his staff. The prince tries to use his greatest power, to combine the swords as a megazord of blades. The huge sword collides with the king's staff and destroys it. However, his armor is more resistant and breaks the great sword. Wukong is unleashing more and more power. And his scream simply incinerates what is left of the three hunters. It was all over. The king returned to eliminate Tang, but was surprised by Duan. Even though she tried to use her ring skill, it had no effect. With only one blow to her head, the Monkey King defeated the woman. Already almost lifeless, she just wanted to hear what real feeling Tang had for her. At last he says that he really loved her. However Duan does not resist the wounds. Tang takes her bracelet and puts it on his finger like a ring. Wukong finishes by destroying Duan's body. Everything around Tang was decimated by the demon and this is how the monk awakened his true power. Tang became a personification of Buddha. His strength was so great that nothing could touch him. Using the book of poetry he created an immense statue to face the monkey king, but it was quickly destroyed by the demon. Then the monk went to the last stage. The palm of God, the supreme power of the universe. Buddha advances with his hand into the earth's atmosphere. And like a meteor he collides with Wukong. This time the monkey king could not withstand the power and was destroyed by Buddha's palm. Thus the monkey king can be purified and become his best version. Tang's master says that now he must follow his holy path, with the protection of the three entities purified by him. The monk will continue his journey, and Duan will always accompany him in his memories. So, what did you think of this movie? Let us know in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like it and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.